Well guys, I've gotta say, what is going on here today in the stock market is absolutely shocking me. I thought we would have an awful day today, like at least 450 plus points down on the Dow. I was thinking NASDAQ down at least two to 3% based upon the news that came out last night on Twitter, okay? So if you didn't know, President Trump basically sent out some tweets that were heard around the financial world. He said, for 10 months, China has been paying tariffs to the USA of about 25%. Hold on, let me just do a public service announcement for every single person watching this video, okay? You might be pro-tariffs, you might be against tariffs, I don't really care, and that's not what we're gonna get into. I'm gonna share with you the facts around how a tariff works, okay? Because literally what President Trump said there is 100% not true. This is fact-based stuff I'm gonna share with you, okay? How a tariff literally works. Let's say the USA is in a position where they're like, oh my gosh, all our soap is being made in China or something like that. I don't think that's actually true but let's say that was a scenario, okay? Let's say, you know, the soap industry used to be a big industry in the United States, and now people are like, man, I can't even go and take a shower at night without using some Chinese soap, okay? So let's say the USA, you know, politicians get in office and like, we need to put tariffs on China, we need to build back up our soap industry, okay? So let's say the USA does a 10% tariff on China soap, all right? So when the soap arrives to the States, okay, so it gets shipped from China, it arrives over in the States, right? The 10% tariff needs to be paid within 10 days to the US government, okay? So the US government will collect money on all this Chinese soap coming over, okay? The importing businesses are what pays the tariff, okay? Not the exporting country, which would be China, it's the importing companies. So let's say there's a bunch of big soap, US-based soap companies, and they used to you know, produce all the soap in the States, and then they found it was a lot cheaper to go ahead and produce that soap in China, so they, they went ahead and did that offshore. All those US-based companies are who ends up paying the tariffs in the end, okay? So it's not literally the Chinese paying the tariffs, it's actually the US-based companies paying the tariffs, okay? And generally what's gonna end up happening is retail prices for soap will end up going up because all the US companies who make their soap in China have to pay 10% more, they have to pay these tariffs, they're just probably just gonna raise the prices at all the retail stores by about 10%, and who's it end up really hitting in the end, usually at the end of the day, usually hits US consumers, until at least all these other companies, the US based companies kind of figure out either another country to produce in, or if they wanna bring back production in the USA. So you can have a debate whether tariffs work, whether they don't work, all those sorts of things. You cannot debate the facts on how a tariff works, okay? This is facts, this is not like an opinion, okay? But anyways, let's go on here. So this is a huge tweet because this is a huge thing here. He goes into talking about 25% on high tech things, 10% on $200 billion of other goods. He says these payments are partially responsible for our great economic results. The 10% will go up to 25% on Friday. That is mind blowing guys. No, I don't know anybody that was expecting all of a sudden to hear something like that. The 10% tariffs are gonna go to 25% on Friday, okay? Then he goes on to say $325 billion of additional goods sent to us by China remain untaxed, but will shortly at a rate of 25%, okay? Going straight to a 25% you know, tariff rate on basically $325 billion in goods, that is massive, okay, if that went into effect. The tariffs paid to the USA have had little impact on product costs, mostly borne by China. The trade deal with China continues, but too slowly as they attempt to renegotiate. No, he says, okay? So this was shocking information because not, not I, mean, I don't know anybody that really expected this to just come out of blue water like that. The 10% tariffs to go to 25%, and then literally talking about, you know, $325 billion in goods going to a 25% tariff. That would be crazy, okay? And this is just after this news broke earlier in the week. A US-China trade deal is possible by next Friday, they were talking about, so which would be this upcoming Friday, okay? A lot of folks were talking about there was a possible trade deal. A lot of people thought, you know, in the inner circles that a trade deal could get done this upcoming Friday. And now to hear, oh, no, maybe no trade deal, and maybe all of a sudden 10% tariff goes to 25, and then $325 billion in goods goes to 25. And what's that gonna mean for the Chinese economy? Could that slow down in such a massive way it hurts a lot more? US companies and a lot more stocks to stock market. Like we've seen almost every single company that's been missing earnings has been missing earnings because of China. If you just look at the massive amount of companies that have missed earnings that are international businesses, almost all of them 
almost all of them, it is because of the weakness out of China, specifically right now in the Asian region in general, but specifically China. And so if China gets a bunch weaker, right? That's just gonna hurt a ton of US companies and, and hurt the stock market in the end because those earnings will not be met and the, the, you know, the earnings expectations will continue to slide down in a much bigger way, okay? Now, if we look at the markets in China last night, the Shanghai Composite was down over five and a half percent, okay? That is a massive, massive move down there. And so when I heard this, uh, this shocking news about the tariffs come out, which no one was really expecting, and when I saw how much the Chinese markets were down, I was thinking, oh my gosh, like tomorrow's gonna be a disaster. I was, I was fully expecting to wake up this morning and look at the markets and expect 500 points down on the Dow, if not 600 points. I, got, I was expecting all my stocks to be down three, four, five, maybe even some 6%. I, so I was like, okay, we might, we might be able to buy some stuff tomorrow. And then I wake up and the markets are down 187 points. It's just like a normal day out here. It's like nothing special at all. Okay. S&P 500 is down about 0.8%. NASDAQ is down less than 1%. Like this is just normal trading stuff in the end. You know, markets go up a half a percent or a percent, you know, day in and day out pretty much, you know, just how things move. And so for this type of trading activity to be going on today, I'm absolutely bewildered by this. Like I cannot believe this. I thought today was going to be a dramatic day. Like I was fully expecting to wake up talking about, you know, there was a stock market crash today in a big, big way. And for the markets, like literally be down less than 200 points on the Dow. I am absolutely amazed. Now the Chinese stocks are the ones getting hit the worst. Anything that does a lot of business in China is absolutely getting hurt. Okay. So Alibaba's down over 4% today. That's actually a personal investment of mine. Wind Resorts is down nearly 5% today. Obviously they get a significant portion of their revenue from the Macau region, the gambling region over there. JD.com's down around 5% today. VIP shop is down over 5.5% today. So the Chinese names are getting hammered, but most other stocks in general are not getting hit the, the way it seems, okay? Now, I want to talk about what the market hates here in just a minute, but let's just think about this for a moment, okay? This doesn't mean the markets can't get worse as the day goes on. I mean, as of recording this video, there's still four hours left in the trading day, roughly. Um, so things could get a lot worse, and maybe all of a sudden we do end up down 450 points or 500 points today. We'll have to see, okay? No no one kind of knows what's going on there. Also, what could happen is this could just be a slow move down and like we just move down, you know, around 1% a day. And by the end of the week, maybe the Dow's gone down 1,000 points or 1,500 points or something, okay? So sometimes, you know, these reactions, it doesn't all come in one day. Sometimes it's several days out and you just kind of get worse and worse as the week goes on. So we'll have to see, that's a possibility. You know, I'm ready to buy some stocks, specifically some more Tesla. Tesla is actually up today. I'm like, I was hoping Tesla would be down four or five percent today. I want to buy some more of that one. So what does the market hate? And when I talk about the market, I'm talking about the stock market. The market hates bad news when good news is expected, which is very similar to this situation. This is something the stock market always hates, or just fund managers or whatever you want to call it, okay? The algorithms. Everything hates it when all of a sudden you're expecting some good news, like, oh, we might get a trade deal this upcoming Friday. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, maybe no trade deal, and who knows when a trade deal will come, and oh, tariffs are going from 10% to 25%, and maybe another 25% tariff on $325 billion more in goods. Like, that type of information goes from a situation where it was like, oh, this is good, this, you know, everybody's expecting this, to all of a sudden, like, overnight, oh my gosh, this is a disaster, okay? And the stock market in general just hates uncertainty, and I would say now, at this point in time, we have a lot more uncertainty in the market. We don't know if we're gonna get a trade deal at all anytime soon now at this point in time. I mean, it went from a, a situation where people are starting to become very certain that, hey, a trade deal is going to get done very, very soon, okay? And now we're in a situation where we're very uncertain, okay? Now, who knows who's at fault here? Maybe it's both sides at fault. Maybe it's the Chinese at fault. Maybe it's the USA at fault. Who knows who's at fault in this situation? You know, none of us really know because we're not inside those negotiation rooms and who's fighting for what and those types of things, okay? But needless to say, we have a lot more uncertainty now in the markets knowing that the terror situation could get actually a lot worse rather than a lot better, which is what most people were expecting out there. So we're going to have to see how things kind of trade out for the remainder of today and for the remainder of the week, guys, because this is going to be an interesting week, needless to say, because this was just, this just came out of left field and no one kind of knows what's going on here. Um, so anyways, I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section on your opinion on anything we discussed in today's video. I would love to hear from you guys as always. And uh, 
hey, I hope stocks go a lot lower because there aren't a lot of great deals right now and uh, I would love to you know, buy some great deals, all right? Thank you for watching and have a great day.